I'm done. Bronte, you should have been done ages ago, but okay. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Married at First Sight Australia season 10, episode 32. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. So we are at the final dinner party and this is like the final reckoning for a lot of these couples because a lot of people are realizing, mm, we ain't gonna be together in the long run, okay? One of them is Alyssa. Alyssa and Duncan, I just, you guys know how I feel about Alyssa, okay? Alyssa is determined to make Duncan look like the villain some way, somehow, she believes she's able to do it. And so she's recounting how the homestay went and I'm just like, I don't recall things going down that way. He says he never takes anyone on the boat. Okay, that's not true. And I was like ready to tell him like how I'm falling for him. And he pretty much ripped our entire relationship apart. So she now is trying to say, and I was ready to tell him that I love him to make him look like the villain. Go oh, the words I want to say, the words I want to say. And you know what's crazy? Duncan very well could have a lot of um of um issues but they're very hard to see if at all because Alyssa is just so insufferable she makes him look like an absolute saint any issues that Duncan could have had I don't I can't see I'm blind I'm blind I am blind I see nothing some of you guys were saying in the comments down below that he's being petitioned to be the next bachelor I will even cover the bachelor if Duncan is the lead absolutely Alyssa and Duncan, uh, not Duncan, Alyssa and Harrison must have went to the same school of victim because here Harrison is trying to make it seem like he was just absolutely hounded, was shocked, taken by surprise, was attacked by Bronte and the sister. And I'm like, you have selective memory, don't you? Because what about the part you played? Bronte just viciously attacked me. Oh, you're a gaslighting, narcissistic dickhead. Bronte's finally attack. got full-on support from the, the sister. sister and perhaps found a voice. Can we, can we talk? Oh. Oh, he wants to talk. Control the narrative. Okay. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. I'm actually fine. So you didn't gaslight her? No? You didn't call her a liar? No? You don't love bomb the girl? giving her all this affection, pulling it away very quick. You didn't do any, oh, okay. And then for you, Miss Bronte. She's like, you know, I have too much self-respect for myself and I'm not gonna keep subjecting myself to this kind of treatment from Harrison. Baby girl, we would have been on your back if you left day one. <laughs> but you decided to stay fine. At the honeymoon, you decided to stay fine. After the first dinner party, that should have been enough. All that had happened should have been enough. The man was talking to other women. The man had planned to pursue a relationship with somebody else on the outside. The man had gaslit you, making it seem like he's putting in more effort than you were. The man then consummated the marriage with you and then is talking about, I don't even find you sexually attractive and I might not ever find you. And you still st- mm -mm. At this point, I see you just as bad as him. <laughs> as him? Him. Why does him sound weird right now? Whatever, I see y'all the same. So the experts bring out uh, the honesty boxes and the first couple to answer is Tani and Ollie. Honestly, I, pfft, what can you say about these two? They're a little more perfection. <laughs> like, I just find it crazy that we've been on this thing for so long and we just don't, we can't get enough of each other. Do you think I'm going to be enough for you long term? Yeah, like, 1,000% you're enough. Are you falling in love with me? Yes, I am. Whoa. Yeah. I will genuinely, genuinely be heartbroken if these two don't work out. One, they are restoring love for me because they are in my age bracket. Clearly it is out there for me. It is possible. Guys, please make it work. Please make it work because we need a success story and everybody else is a train wreck that we cannot support. We can't support anybody else but y'all. Please make it work. 
Next is Alyssa and Duncan. And honestly, all I hear is projection, projection, projection. Off the back of the final date, I am, um, yeah, I'm having a lot of doubts. I love how you make me feel when it's good. When it's good? Yeah. Which is what? 56% of the time. I'm just describing some things about how I like about you and you just cut me down. Even with all of Alyssa's BS, Duncan manages to come across as a sweetheart genuinely. And he genuinely is able to find good things to say about this woman while she's currently criticizing him and making him look like a bad person. He, it could never be me. It could never be me. Actually, it could be me, but I would decide that it wouldn't be me. Because let me tell you something. If you want to go low, I will not only meet you, I will surpass you. You go low, I go to hell. You go low, I go to hell. Don't take me there. Don't take me there. Oh, Alyssa would send me there so quick. You, you, you really want to play this game? Because I promise I'll play it way better than you. I'll run circles around you, sis. Don't try me. I'm so tired of her. And here she is now pleading to have Duncan see things from her perspective. When has he not seen things from your perspective? This entire thing has been from your perspective. There has been times where he wants to be, um, uh, he wants to handle situations differently, but he doesn't because he's seeing things from your first, from your perspective and he's seeing that you are now the victim in the situation and he now has to be the person who comes and apologizes when I feel like he has had nothing to apologize for. I feel like this man has had nothing to apologize for, but he does because he sees things from your perspective. You're the one who doesn't see things from his perspective, okay? So how about you do all of us a favor and you leave that man alone so that somebody who's actually deserving of his love can get it. Cause child, oh, so done with her. Evelyn and Rupert are next and they talk about the progression in romance. However, Evelyn does pinpoint certain issues that she has with Rupert and how it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough road ahead of them if some things don't change. Do you feel sexual chemistry with me? Yes. But if you go into the experiment and the woman shows no interest in you. I don't think I showed no interest. I've okay. chosen to stay time and time again. If you're only sometimes attracted to me. Rupert, I've had sex with you. Next question. So I will say that sometimes I do question whether or not Evelyn does have an attraction to Rupert, but because they have had a slow burn and the romance has been upped in their relationship and they have since consummated the marriage, I do think that she, she does find him attractive. I do think that she does like him. She does want to see a future. Um, Rupert, I think it's an insecurity that's coming out when he's unsure of whether or not there's attraction. It's it's there. I, I'd say it's there, but you're not really putting in like effort. I don't, I don't know, like... I do believe that effort is mutual and her saying, well, I stayed every week. Mm, I don't quite think that's enough, Evelyn. I do think you also need to show desire and stuff like that. But I think in this case, Rupert has been the one that has been slacking. And if he doesn't want to put in the effort now, especially with the last episode, he already shared that moving is likely not something he's thinking about in the near future. This relationship is not going to work unless that changes. Like you need to be the aggressor, you need to be a little bit more romantic, a little bit more, you know, the chase, the court, court the woman, damn it, court her. <sighs> Rupert, yeah, I don't know. He's he's a hell of a lot better than, than Cameron, so I'll give him that. Speaking of Cameron, Lyndall, Lyndall and Cameron are next, and I don't know, I feel like Cameron all but said, not even, I don't know, no, he literally, no, he literally said it. Yeah, this man doesn't wanna be with her. I don't know if you'll fit into my life in the NT. Doesn't mean that you can't fit into parts of my lifestyle. I'm kind of saying I don't think I'm the right person for you. Which I don't think I, think I am. Unfair. I think you need someone who needs to show you all this affection, needs to give you the reassurance. Someone is gonna want affection in your life, whether that's Lyndall or not, in every single relationship. Is this the girl for you? Like, speak candidly. After the home stays, no. Lyndall, don't let a man tell you he don't want you more than once. Don't let a man tell you he don't want you more than once. He cannot give you affection. He says he doesn't think he's good enough for you. He basically said anything that y'all have done um, intimately has been pressured onto him. Um, he doesn't want you to move 
And if you did move, y'all wouldn't be in contact anyways. And now he just told the men, "Mm, I don't really think Lindell's the one for me. Girl, cut it and run. Cut it and run. Cut it and run. Do like a Bronte, get up and leave. Don't turn back because it's over. It is over. I agree with Evelyn when she says, you, you're going to need to be a little bit more affectionate for anybody, not just for Lyndall, for anyone. And yeah, Cameron might, might have made some big strides for him personally, but when it comes to pursuing and maintaining and having a flourishing relationship, you got a long way to go, mister long way to go. So maybe just focus on your career right now because don't waste another woman's time the way that you've wasted Lindell's, please. Now in my mind, in my mind, I was like, oh, Cam is such an asshole. I didn't expect somebody to actually call him out on it though. For her to hear this in front of everyone is a low blow. Is it? That's not good. You are such an asshole. I don't think this was necessary. I don't think it was necessary. Because I actually do think Cameron is trying, which is the saddest part about it. I think he is trying. It's just, this is his capacity. Um, but yeah, I do feel the same. I, yeah, this, this, yeah, I, I feel the same. Leighton and Melinda claim to have strong feelings for each other. Um, I think Melinda basically said she loves him. But yeah, Leighton's analytical mind is just not computing for him. Are you falling in love with me? Already there. Oh. If you can't speak to someone, are you really? I knew you were gonna do this. Far out. I'm right, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's black, it's white. It's very hard to, to get any sort of understanding. Are you falling in love with me? I'm not there yet. Listen, at the end of the day, just because you have feelings for somebody does not mean that you're compatible. And that seems to be the case for these two. Yes, you have strong feelings for each other, but logistically, do we work? The answer is no. Two headstrong people who don't want to concede to anybody at any point ever. It's never going to, it's never going to work ever. Unless you're okay with just having it be like a business arrangement, you know, where y'all come just for intimacy and to, to show face. But if there's an actual relationship there, it would be a tumultuous one, that's for sure. I'd have to agree with Harrison, which I hate to do, but it is a toxic relationship. It is. They sweep a lot of things under the rug because when they do address it, it's World War Three. So, sucks for Melinda. She just expressed that she loves the man. He's not there. He's not even falling, I think he said. So, it's probably a wash for them too. It's a wash for damn near everybody. It's definitely a wash for Bronte and, and, and Harrison because... Oof. How could I have been a better partner to you over the last couple of months? I don't want you to threaten to leave me again. You and your sister attacked me. Oh, please. She called me very, very damaging things in an aggressive manner, and you supported that. You victim complex yourself all the time. No, I don't think so, Bronte. Everybody else is the problem. Don't tell me what I think, Bronte. No, let me talk. For once, just let me talk. We're done. We're over. And I honestly don't want to see you again. I think the timing is very convenient for you, Miss Bronte. You chose the end of the experiment after you've gotten your entire stipend, basically, and you've been on the show for however many weeks now. Now you want to give Harrison a piece of your mind? Mm. Okay, everything that you are dealing with him, you've been dealing with from the beginning and you have felt these feelings in the beginning, but you constantly decide to, you know, pretend like it didn't happen and you're going to give it a proper try. You know, Harrison's falling in love with you and you want to fall in love with him and you want to move to Sydney and you, oh girl, oh girl, please, like, please. I hope you get the notoriety that you're looking for. I hope that it's a positive experience for you because I feel if I would have come across like Bronte on the screen, I don't think the reception publicly would be that great. I don't think people are going to see me as the victim in the way that Bronte tried to come across. I don't think it's going to have that effect. I really don't. But we'll see. Final vows are next week. So let's stay tuned for that. Who do you guys think will stay together? Who do you guys think is going to say yes? Who do you guys think will last past the experiment? Personally, Tani and Ali are a given. I think Melinda and Leighton are going to say yes and give it a try, but then things are not going to work on the outside. Uh, Listen, Duncan, honestly, Duncan, I need you to hand 
her eviction papers. I need you to get her out of your life so that we can have you on The Bachelor and we can, you know, give you a proper shot at love. Okay. So yeah, as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.